All right, ladies and gentlemen, we move into that uh, segment of the event where we have a report launched, the launch of the NASCOM Web3 report. I'd like to request the team to play the video. We have with us uh, this afternoon Namita Jain. Uh, she's the practice lead for digital transformation research with NASCOM Insights. And she has uh, over 15 years of experience in technology, strategy, uh, research, and consulting. I'd like to request her to come forward and share with us a few words on the launch of the NASCOM Web3 report. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an extreme honor to be part of the NASCOM Product Conclave 2022. Uh, thank you for having me here. I know I'm acutely aware of the fact that I stand between you and lunch, so we'll make this really quick, but it gives me immense pleasure to introduce this report with this audience on this stage. The India Web3 opportunity and the real study, the the uh, India Web3 startup landscape, an emerging technology frontier. Uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? Right. When I was preparing and thinking about this particular presentation, I wanted to really start with what is Web3. All of us know this term. We've we are living in this world of a lot of talk about cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrency trading, blockchain, and, we've, and, and, and these have literally you know, uh, flooded the, the publications, the articles, and there's a lot of buzz. But when I wanted to talk to you about this, I was wondering, is Web3 an evolution? Is it a revolution? Is it the next generation of the web? Is it a complete internet transformation? And somewhere I read this word called movement, and that latched on. Uh, I think it is a movement. It is a movement towards what Bernard Marr said, that we will decentralize controls. We will move towards distributed architecture, autonomous transactions, uh, permissionless, trustless architecture using something as fundamental as blockchain that somebody in 2008 who uh, we are really yet to see, uh, introduced in the form of Bitcoin. So ever since then, we've seen this technology move, but why is it important for us to do something about it now? Sorry. Right. Uh, I think in the last two years, uh, and the study goes a lot more in detail, we've seen tremendous growth in terms of investments. If you talk about 2021, which is smack in the middle of the pandemic, this particular uh, segment invited about 30 billion, and already in Q1 of this year, we've nearly met 50% of what was invested in last year, which is about 15 billion. And what does that mean? It is about a 15x growth from 2015. It is about 5% of... Uh, you know, the VC funding wallet share, and that is a 5x rise from 2015. So definitely the momentum is picking, and the momentum is picking fast, and that specifically is the reason why we wanted to look at this area and look at it specifically from the perspective of the Indian startup landscape. And that is an encouraging picture by itself. 450 plus startups, and let me give you one figure, just about 35% of that, which is 160 plus in last year. About 1.3 billion uh, plus of investments within the last two years, and that's in the middle of the pandemic, four unicorns, 75,000 trained blockchain 
employees already with the tech industry. Uh, obviously, um, you know, building multiple kinds of solutions, if not an entire Web3 solution. But here is one interesting thing. If you think about the cryptocurrency world, which took over between the 2008 to 2010 space, and then a lot of growth from 2015, 2017, we see that momentum now coming into India, but in a very, very diversified way. 70% of the Indian startups are not into the cryptocurrency trading application building. They are building applications in diverse use cases, whether it's decentralized finance, decentralized communities, enterprise solutions, and more and more, the L1 and the L2 scale uh, L2 level solutions in blockchain, which is the protocol and the scaling solutions. And that gives us a lot of hope that there is more to do, and India is definitely positioned to lead in this. And that is what the study is all about. But there is a catch. And there is a catch because uh, all of us talk about this when we talk about Web3, which is the regulatory um, um, you know, uh, ambiguity. But there's one more thing that I would like to point out from this stage, which is lack of awareness in people. So as producers and as creators, we talk about regulations and policy, but as consumers, we have to think about what Web3 brings in terms of mindset, mindset shift, in terms of using the web, the usability of the web, and the cost of using the web and transactions. And, that, and those are the two aspects where we, I think as a community, as an ecosystem, we need to start working very, very actively. One of the things um, that we at NASCOM um, are, are putting together is an approach. Um, and, and the reason is because we don't want to lose on the opportunity. What is the approach? We're saying that it's not about blockchain being a good or a bad technology. We're saying that as Web3, as an as a, as a aggregation of multiple technologies coming together, it's the usage and the conduct of technology with the high-risk use cases or the low-risk use cases that needs to be regulated. So one, we need to look at the usage. Second, we need to assess the risk. And third, we need to enable our startups and the ecosystem to think beyond cryptocurrencies into the diversified possibilities of Web3. And with that, I want to end uh, before we invite uh, a very esteemed panel on this, that we are already making steps towards taking Web3 forward with the three biggest ecosystem partners, the industry, the academia, and the government very, very actively coming together. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of headlines in this space uh, in terms of uh, you know, collaborations on blockchain certifications, several state governments setting up COEs and blockchain academies, and the government also thinking about how to expand the sandbox beyond you know, financial uh, use cases. With that, uh, I would end uh, the launch of the study will happen just uh, any time now. Please log into community.nascom.in or nascom.in. Download your copy. It's a free publication. I would really, really encourage everyone to distribute it as much as possible. And as always, we love your feedback.